So welcome to Biofeedback, uh, and thanks for coming to Migraine Day. So I don't know how many of you have heard about using Biofeedback to treat migraines. Has anyone tried it? Yeah. So I think it is something every migrainer should try. But more than try, you should go to somebody who will do an assessment first, because there's a certain type of uh, person with a certain type of migraine that seems to do much better with biofeedback than others. And that's because of the magic pencil. So all of you have a pencil, if you hold it up and go like this, if your pencil changes color, your hands are warm. And that's a good thing. So there's a great many people with migraine that do something called vasoconstriction. The blood vessels in their hands constrict whenever their nervous system becomes hyperactivated. So if you look at this sheet I gave you here, this is the automatic or autonomic nervous system. And on one end is wax on, wax off, relaxed, called the parasympathetic nervous system. And on the other side is our sympathetic nervous system, SNS. That is the puppy upper <laughs> energizing system in the body. And it's automatic. It automatically happens. And how does it automatically happen? It reads, number one, your emotions. And number two, your cognitions. But a cognition with an emotion of emergency or threat attached to it gets your whole sympathetic system going. And when the sympathetic system goes, we go into that, you know, fight or flight response, you release uh, chemicals, hormones, and for many, many migraineurs, they vasoconstrict. You don't get a migraine in a vasoconstricted state. You get the migraine when you vasodilate rapidly after a prolonged period of vasoconstriction. So you'll get your migraines at night, on the weekend, when you're relaxing. That's when the migraines hit. And people say, why? I'm not stressed. I was stressed, but I'm not stressed now. It's because the migraine comes on with the release of chemicals that happens with very rapid dilation of blood vessels that have been very, very constricted. One theory. But I'm telling you, I've been working biofeedback 30 years. This is great. If you're a vasoconstrictor, you should definitely try some biofeedback. What is biofeedback? Biofeedback is fancy, expensive equipment like this or biofeedback is cheap equipment like this, or biofeedback is stuff like this. These are stress squares. Here, why don't you hand some of these out? So some of you are, might be familiar with the mood ring. The mood ring uh, was black if you were angry and blue if you were very happy. And I'm like, well, no, I'm blue and I'm very angry. <laughs> so it has actually nothing to do with your mood the uh, stress square simply tells us about the temperature of your hand. And so if your uh, hands are cold um, and you don't have blood moving through your hands, um, you uh, are, are in the, the black, as we say. You're vasoconstricted. Can anyone figure out, like, why the hands would want to do that? Like, why would the hands vasoconstrict with fight or flight? Why? Well, it does, you, it's, that's a great answer. You, you do get more blood to certain areas, but that's not why you vasoconstrict, because you have to think about it. You're getting no nutrients, no oxygen. To this is really not good, right? You know if you put a tourniquet on, you're supposed to release it in, what, like every 20 minutes or so? But the body does this, and it's part of the fight-or-flight response, because they, we fought with our hands and ran away with our feet. So those are the two things that vasoconstrict when there's a sense of emergency. Sense of emergency vasoconstriction. I don't want to fight you, win, and then bleed to death. Or run away from you without my PF flyers and no streets and bleed to death. Like you look back, and, oh, trail of blood, mine. Oh, I'm dead. You know? The other thing we do automatically is we clench our teeth. Arr, right? Ready to bite? Giving you the signal? Back off. Other thing we do is our shoulders go up to protect our juggler vein. Because if the animal goes through my juggler vein, I'm dead. So all of this equipment is to tell you, feedback to you, if you've arrived at a very relaxed parasympathetic state. Now Steve, he's a student at Widener. Widener has a doctoral program in biofeedback, and he's going to demonstrate a very simple piece of equipment called HeartMath or EM Wave. And let's uh, 
We're going to put them on what's called the coherence coach. Uh, yeah, you got to put your sensor on. So that little sensor goes on his ear. And let me just get right here. And the coherence coach, we're going to listen to this, is going to mention three things. And Steve is going to work on breathing. So we know from yogas. Uh, there you go. Hello, I'm your coherence coach. I'm here to teach you the quick coherence technique and show you how to improve your coherence scores with your M wave. Let's get started. The quick coherence technique is a simple three step process. I'll take you through each step. First, down here it's saying he's in blue and green area. That's good. Red, not so good. Now the second step is adding heart-focused breathing. Maintain your heart focus, and while breathing, imagine that your breath is flowing. So he's saying basically mindfulness, focus your mind. Mindfulness we know works really well. Alter your breath, slow it down. While maintaining heart focus and heart breathing, follow the ball. So this is just a breath pacer. There are a lot of apps you can get on your phones. Slow down your breath, about seven breaths a minute. So that you are breathing deeply, but easily. Once you've set the pace of There's a whole physiological reason why slow breathing slows you down. Now let's get to the third and third and most important. The emotional shift. An emotional shift. Enter a high state of coherence and comfortably sustain coherence. You need to feel a positive emotion. While maintaining heart focus and heart rate, right. using the breathing pacer to guide you, try to feel a positive So I'm going to turn coherence co coach of off and just look at this pattern. This is a beautiful pattern. I can't do that. That's great. He's got 100% green. Now, he's at a baby level. If I put him at a harder level, he might not get green. But that's a beautiful pattern. This is not his breath. This is actually his heart. This is beats per minute of his heart. And it's a very cool thing. Of course, I teach this, and it takes me 40 hours of teaching. Um, so I can't do anything in 20 minutes. And, but I only, I'm only eight minutes in. This is really great. But basically, I'll tell you a little bit about what, what this cardiovascular dance, which is so cool. If you shut your mind off. So this is an electrical center. We're three-brained creatures. Here. I knew it in my heart. I knew it in my gut, right? I know my heart tells me. My gut tells me. So we have three brains, and actually there are three neural networks, three places that have neurotransmitter receptors, the gut, the heart, the brain. So he's saying, get out of your head, mindfulness. Stop the chatter, the monkey mind, right? Focus on the area of your heart, the, the feeling, and then start a, a slow breath. The slow breath is all about energy metabolism. When you breathe slow, all of these little cells in your body go slow too. So you're a colony of cells, and those cells use oxygen and glucose to make energy. So would everyone inhale and let it out slowly. If you do about three of those, it's going to slow everyone down inside of you. All those cells are going to slow down. They have to because they don't have enough oxygen to make papillonar energy. And then down and relax. Relax your shoulders on the exhalation. So just like yoga, and some of you do yoga, right? All of you are doing what's called hatha yoga, the yoga of the body, relaxing your muscles. But then there's pranayama yoga, the yoga of the breath. You could get control of your breath. When um, migrainers usually are um, have nervous systems that are very sensitive. You respond. Uh, not only do you respond to environment, environmental sensitivity, but you, you, there's a tendency for migrainers to be somewhat perfectionistic, driven. In other words, they, their, their nervous system makes you more nervous. It's just the way you do life. It's a little, believe it or not, it's different. We're all a little different, right? So your nervous system goes into this very, very fast gear. And to facilitate that, your cells go, okay, like what's your name? Brittany. 
Brittany. I said, Brittany, we got it. Emotionally, we got what you're saying. We're going to help you out. We're going to produce more energy. How are they going to produce my energy? They're going to start her breathing faster. How are they going to breathe faster? Go upper thoracic. These muscles act like a billows. <laughs> if you're running, use them. Not if you're sitting doing work. Use the diaphragm. Diaphragm is a thick respiratory diaphragm. Thick muscle down here, very slow. Slow like an elephant, right? So, so, so in a sense, this sympathetic drive is something you're causing through your emotions, your thoughts, and what your body's doing. So that's heart math, a great little tool. This is another really great little biofeedback tool. So you can come to me. I'm, I'm like a coach. I'm a coach that will eventually kick you out of the office and say, do it at home. Use some of these things. This is just a little hand temperature thing, 25 bucks. And here it's just measuring my hand temperature. Anyone have an idea what my hand temperature should be? Give me a wild guess. Should my hand temperature be uh, 32 degrees? You want to try it? What should it be? 98.6 is my inner body core temperature. So my hand temperature, if there's a lot of blood flowing through my hand, should be somewhere around 90 degrees. Okay, now this is a little slow because 25 bucks, not $2,000 like my equipment. But I'm at 87.5. 87, 8, good. And this would be a great little thing for some of you to work with. The idea is not just to get to learn how, what you need to do to turn on the parasympathetic, to get yourself out of sympathetic, but also to be able to sustain that. We want to create a more stable platform in any migrainer. I work a lot with pain disorders. It's the same thing. If we can calm things down, you will not feel your pain as intensely. Calm things down in the brain. This is EEG biofeedback, or sometimes called neurofeedback. He has a little device. This is like $200 device. Now, again, my equipment is thousands of dollars, but this is a little home trainer. It can do a certain amount of things. So let's see if we can get some alpha. We want alpha, and what else do we want? What, what brain wave do we want? Do we want fast beta? Oh, he gets excited with it. Well, that's good. <laughs> you can get excited with fast beta. Uh, let's see if we have a connection. We never know. Oops. I know we didn't uh, oh, you didn't turn it on. I don't know. I don't oh, he doesn't know how to turn it on. My students don't know everything because if I told them everything, they would think they don't need me anymore. <laughs> let, let me see. There's a switch. There he goes. Now he's uh, turned on. And he's plugged in, and we'll see if we can connect. And I think we got it. If not, we'll do a demo at my office. Nip. Well, we did, we did practice with this, but of course, on the day of, but well, I'm still breathing. Wax on, wax connect, and just just with the. I think we're connected. We'll try. Uh, nope, okay. Uh, it's not going to happen. So anyway, brain waves won't happen. But do you think I want your brain, the speed of your brain to be fast or slow? Slower. Does anyone know what their, the, the names of the brain waves are when they go slow? Delta, you're asleep, unconscious. Theta, meditative state, alpha, kind of, just staring at a dot in the wall. <laughs> What's after alpha? Beta, right. Beta sounds a little puppy ever, right? So beta is you're working, your brain is going, firing a little faster because you told it has to do work. And then there's a faster, the beta goes faster and faster based on work you have to do or emotions attached to that work, right? So right now I'm talking to you and I could actually be an alpha. I could be in beta, or if I'm scared, nervous, apprehensive, if I really worried that this didn't work, I don't care. This is technology. It's not people. I want people to work. Technology doesn't always work. I'm not, it, it doesn't phase me. Now, part of why it doesn't phase me is because I spent about a year training myself on biofeedback. 
<laughs> learning how to be productive, perfectionistic, and driven like I am, but to stay in a nice, relaxed state while I do it. Easy peasy? Easy peasy. Right. Okay, so let's uh, get some of you on your thermal devices. Uh, so who wants to take this? And who knows they have cold hands now? Does anyone know, want to try to warm them up? Okay, so, so, so even if you start at like 90 degrees, yeah, give it to somebody. And does anyone want to try out this um, heart math? Breathe in, come on up. Yeah. So this is mostly demo. Um, so just like yoga, we have um, Hatha yoga is the yoga of the body. We want the body to be relaxed. So we have surface EMG uh, electromyograph biofeedback that tells us if a muscle is tight or relaxed. The muscles that you tend to tighten with the stress response or the jaw, right, for biting and the TMJ. Shoulders go up to protect your jugular vein. So somebody doesn't, you know, right? And um, so what else gets tight? Your, your, your neck, your, the whole back area, right, right. And for some people, the frontalis muscle, right? The, so a lot of times when people are listening to me, I'm talking to them or my students, I go up and I go like that. And I say, you don't need this to hear me. So don't, don't you always sometimes feel like if you go like this, you're going to understand things better? Well, you're not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ready? Uh, okay. So we're going to... Steve, you want to hook her up? Sure. Put that right on her ear. And we'll run the coherence coach. In this right in back of the earring. Good. So what you're going to do I mean, is just breathe in, breathe out. Can you see the... Um, so come up a little bit here. And we'll run the coherence coach again and just try to follow what he says to do. You're at 94 degrees? That's great. I'm going to go up. So this is breathe in. And then breathe out. Now, for some people, this could be too slow. We could make it a little faster at first and then slow it down. Could you go up? That's great. Ah, now look at this. Here she's in blue and green. And if we look at the pattern, this is really beautiful. Now you see how her pattern isn't a perfect pattern yet, but it's good enough for some blue and green. So let's look at her pattern. It's a little different than Steve's. And all this means is that her mind was also very active while she was doing this. So that it was going up and down, but every time the brain gets involved, the electricity of the brain, it disrupts the electricity in the heart. So the cardiopulmonary dance is this. When I inhale, the heart will beat faster. When I exhale, the heart will beat slower. It's called heart rate variability. And the healthier you are, the more variability you have. If you have a heart rate of 60 beats a minute, you should not be beating once per second. You will have a cardiac event. <laughs> when you inhale, the heart says it has to distribute oxygen. It beats fast. Exhale, it beats slow. And if, if it's doing that, it's telling us your mind is quiet. All right, so hope you enjoy using your own little biofeedback pencils. That's good. And um, next group is ready to come in. So thank you so much for coming.